What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to another Waking Chaos Era video. Alright everyone, today we're going to talk about gear. We're fully going to break it down in its entirety. Because I was looking through my older videos and I realized I never actually did this. So now is a perfect time to do it. So let's get right into this one and let's talk about gear. The first thing I want to address about gear is the best way to look at it when you're rolling up your gear or getting gear for the first time. Whether it's 4 star gear, 5 star gear, doesn't matter. The best thing to do is to break it into three sets, and that's going to be the support build, the DPS build, and the hybrid build. This will make it easier for you to decide what gear you actually want to roll up. So for example, if you're building a DPS, let me pull up a DPS here real quick. So let's just say you're building Sir Nicholas. He's going to fall under the DPS build. Therefore, you're going to be looking for stats that synergize with the DPS build. And those substats are going to be crit rate, crit damage, attack, precision, some HP is okay, but you're mainly looking for those glass cannon substats. And my Darken Nicholas is in my best damage dealing set, or my best DPS set. So if we take a look at it, we'll see that it, we're on a broken set and a crit rate set. Broken set doesn't matter as long as you get the stats that you need. So if we look at the overall stats, we will see that we're almost at 5,000 attack. We have almost 250% crit damage, almost 100% crit rates. Speed's a little bit low, but we do have nice health and nice defense on him, which really does help when you're getting into those further turns. Not so much with Dark Nicholas, just due to the fact that he has the unkillable buff. But when you're talking about other damage dealers, it is good to have that HP and defense on them. It's not a necessity, though. When you're building a DPS, you just want to go after those straight DPS stats. Next build we're going to talk about is the support build. There's many ways to do a support build. There's a slow support, just very tanky with HP and defense. Then there's a speedy support. It really just depends on what content you're doing at the time and how fast you need to be and all that great stuff. If you're just looking to be super tanky, then speed doesn't matter. But if you're looking to have that higher base speed, then yes, even on a support build, you're going to worry about speed. Even with your DPSs, to an extent, you're going to need speed if you're not using wind tracks. But to keep this simple, usually on a support build, you're going to use speed boots and then the rest HP and defense. So we're going to take a look at my brand. and He's a perfect example of a support build. So if we click on his overall stats, we'll see that he has almost 20,000 HP, 1,700 defense, 162 speed, and the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. I do like to have some focus and resistance on my brand because I use him in arena and stuff like that. So getting that taunt and him being able to resist stuff is a good thing. Focus is not a necessity at the end of the day. It really just comes down to the unit that you're building and if you want to use those debuffs or not. And that's going to go for any build. If you're building a Valerie and you're trying to land a defense break with her, then obviously you want to have some focus on her. So the point is, is that not all of these builds are set in stone. It's just to give you guys a base of what you should be looking for when you're building these specific characters. Then, of course, depending on what you're doing, you can change the overall substats that you're looking for. And then the last build we're going to talk about is the hybrid build, and that's going to be a mixture of the two. Marine Shadowblood is a great example for a hybrid build. Her kit fits that perfectly. Makes you want to build her with some HP and defense, but you also want her to be built with damage at the same time. Mine's not necessarily in a hybrid build. I try to do the best I can. I do want her to do some damage, so I was leaning more for the crit rate and crit damage. I didn't get any crit damage on her. I did get 91% crit rate. I am going to change this build, but I did want to show you my Shadow Blood because I do think that she's one of those characters that falls under the hybrid build perfectly. So if you are going to build her that way, basically what you're going to try to do is get some good speed on her, attack, HP, defense, as much crit rate and crit damage as you can, and then the rest after that is totally up to you. But when it comes to a hybrid build, all you're really trying to do is split all the stats and get as much as you possibly can out of each stat, whether it's support or DPS. It really, again, is just going to come down to what content you're trying to do at the time. So now that we have the three builds out of the way, let's talk about gear itself and what gear you're actually going to roll up. Now that we covered all three builds, now you know what substats you're looking for when you're going to roll up your gear. It doesn't matter if you're rolling up a four-star piece of gear or a six-star piece of gear. Nothing changes when it comes to the substats that you're looking for for the character that you're building. I can't tell you how many six-star legendary pieces of gear I fed away. And that's another thing. Don't ever sell your gear. This little button on the bottom, sell. Ignore it. Don't ever use it. If you're not going to use a piece of gear, just feed it to another piece of gear. That's the best way to take advantage of the resources when it comes to leveling up gear. Because I know a lot of you guys are stuck when it comes to being able to bring your gear up to level 15. So a good way to do that is to use the gear you're not using. Feed it to level up the gear that you are using. Even if you power something up to 12 and you decide that you don't want to use it anymore, you can feed that piece of gear to another piece of gear and you'll get that extra XP when doing it. So these boots I have on the screen, they're not really that good. I don't even know why I maxed them out. But the one thing is it does have 31% health and then we do have 50% attack. So this would be good boots for that hybrid build that we were talking about. I still don't think these boots are good enough and I don't ever recommend you guys doing something like this. I don't know what I was thinking when I maxed these out. I probably just was trying to squeeze that extra attack out at the time before I started getting all of this good legendary gear. 
But this is an example of something that you don't ever want to max out. So that's why I wanted to show you guys these exact boots here. So we have these boots on the curse set. We rolled crit rate three times at 22%. The rolls are a little bit low, but 22% crit rate on attack boots, very good, especially when it's followed by a crit damage roll of 13%. Of course, the flat defense and the flat health I wish was percentages, or maybe agility instead of the defense, something like that. But the main reason I wanted to show these boots to you guys is because most people probably wouldn't even roll these boots, but you should at least roll them once or twice to see where the rolls are gonna go, because due to the fact that all the rolls went into crit rate and crit damage, makes these probably the best set of boots that I have when it comes to the DPS set. So the best advice I can give you guys is when you have two good stats you're looking for and then two bad stats that you're not looking for. And honestly, defense and health is not a bad thing when it comes to a DPS like we talked about before, especially on a hybrid DPS. So defense and health is never a bad thing, but you do want to at least roll and see where those rolls are going to go. So let's say, for example, it rolled twice in the defense. I would have stopped rolling them and I would have never touched them again. But because it kept rolling crit rate, I kept going into it, and then we just got lucky and we got crit rate and crit damage. And hopefully the last roll also goes into crit rate and crit damage, and then these boots will be absolutely perfect. But sometimes you do have to take chances, especially when it comes to six-star legendary gear, because you're most likely going to get one or two stats that you don't want, and then two stats that you do want. Another great thing about Awakening when it comes to the gear system is when you roll up your blue gear, you'll start with two stats. And one thing I absolutely love is that you can roll into that same stat all five times. So what I mean by that is if you have a piece of gear like this where it has defense and crit rate, you can roll crit rate all four times and never get a third or fourth substat on that piece of gear. And that goes for purple gear as well. If you have, let's say, for example, these boots, you don't necessarily need to get the fourth substat. It can actually roll into crit damage all four times or health all four times, whatever it is. But in this game, unlike other games, it doesn't force substats. And most other gotch games that I've played, when you go into the third or fourth roll, it forces a second and third substat. Depending on what color gear you're rolling, whether it's purple or blue, blue starts with two, purple starts with three. In most games, if you roll a purple piece of gear on the second or third roll, it forces the fourth substat. This game does not do that. You can just keep rolling into the same substat over and over again, making blue gear actually pretty good or six star blue gear actually pretty good. Because if you get, let's just say, for example, a set of boots that are attack percentage, with crit rate and crit damage, you can roll into that crit rate four times or you can roll into the crit damage four times. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it definitely can happen. So it's always worth trying to roll out the gear and seeing what you get like we talked about before. Another thing to note about this game is on the body and the helm, you cannot roll speed, guys. I can't tell you how many times I make the epic fail of looking for bodies and helms and trying to get speed and then I realize like, oh wait, you can't get speed on helmets and bodies in Awaken. And as far as the weapon goes, you can't get agility, but you can get speed on the weapon, but you can't get agility from what I can see. Any weapon that I've looked at, there's never been agility on it. So to sum it up, helm and body, no speed, and weapon, no agility. Going back to this buy, though, this is another really good example of a great piece of gear. We have attack percentage, crit rate, and crit damage. Now, again, of course, the defense is not what we wanted, and we definitely didn't want to roll into the defense. But having defense on any character is never a bad thing, so the fact that we were able to get... 23% crit damage and 10% crit rate, 16% attack. This is a perfect body for a DPS units. Boots, ring, and necklace. You're looking for Pacific main stats on them. So for the boots, you're looking for speed. And if it's not going to be speed, you're looking for HP percentage or defense percentage or attack percentage. When it comes to the ring, you're looking for crit rate. Most of the time when you get later game, you're not really going to want crit rate. You're going to want that crit damage ring. But if you're not building a DPS, you're building a support, then you're going to be looking for defense or HP percentage. You do not want flat stats on your boots, ring, or necklace unless it's on your boots and it's speed. Other than that, you do not want a flat stat. You always are looking for the percentage on the ring and necklace. It is a necessity and a must, especially in this game because most of the base stats are pretty high. Now, of course, on some of the epics and elites, the attack and stuff is a little bit low. But in most cases, when the unit is fully maxed out and maxed ascended, you're going to be way better off having the percentage than having a flat main stat. Most of the time, you're looking for attack percentage, health, or defense. In some cases, you can go for resistance or focus, depending on what you're doing. Now, of course, if you need to get to that 85% focus, you could just throw a focus necklace out there, and that will get it done. You don't have to worry about getting all the focus and substats. I think I have one here. Here we go. Here's a perfect example. 39% focus at 12. I believe this goes up to 50% or something like that when it's maxed out. And this has speed, resistance, defense, and crit damage. The thing to take away from this, again, is that it synergizes with what I'm trying to do. So if I'm going to use focus, it's most likely going to be on a poisoner or some type of support unit. So the fact that it has speed, resistance, and defense, and we got zero rolls in the crit damage, makes this a really good support necklace 
for something that we need focus for. Just know though, it's going to be very rare that you're going to get perfect substats. Most of the time, it's going to be a case like this where you have one substat that you don't want or two substats that you don't want and then two that you do want or three that you do want. The best advice I can give you is roll it up to six, see where it goes, and then just take it from there. If it keeps rolling the substats that you want, then keep rolling it, and you'll end up using that piece of gear for probably a very long time. Again, with the Cursed Necklace, we have 22% attack, 10% crit rate, 30% defense, 7% focus. This will be used more for a hybrid build, because if you're using health on a necklace, that means you're most likely not using a DPS. The great thing about this necklace is that if we are building a hybrid DPS, we have 22% attack, so it makes up for not having the attack necklace, but then we're also getting that extra health from the main stat of the necklace. So really just got to break it down on what you're building. That's the best way to look at it. I think you guys looking at these three Pacific builds will really help you guys moving forward and help you into building the characters on how you want to build them. Just remember that every character is the same. All characters are different depending on what content you're doing or what you're trying to do. If you're using a character just to land a debuff, then of course you want to make sure you have the focus you need in order to do it. And at the same time, you need to keep that character alive, so you have to have that HP and defense. One thing I've learned through playing Awaken is that no piece of gear is perfect. Sometimes you have to just roll with it and see where it goes. If it doesn't roll good, just feed it to another piece of gear and you'll get the XP, or most of the XP back that you put into that gear that you're not going to use. You'll get it back by feeding it into another piece of gear that you will use in the future. And the last thing I want to talk about is this piece of gear that I pulled earlier today. This is what you would consider a perfect DPS weapon for any... DPS character that you're using. We got crit damage, we got crit rate, we got focus and speed. Most of the time on any damage deal that you're going to be using is going to have some type of debuff or some need for focus. I'm not saying that most of the time you want to just put a ton of focus on your DPS, but if you can get it, it's a great thing. So having a weapon like this that's hitting 70% crit damage, 15% crit rate, speed and focus, probably one of the best DPS weapons you can get your hands on. And that will be the same for your hybrid build and your support build. It's just instead of having DPS stats, you're going to be looking for those support stats, so HP, defense, resistance, so forth and so forth. I think I made myself clear enough. If you guys have any questions or anything to add to this, please comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for the support here on YouTube. We are so close to 5,000 subs. I know I've been posting that much lately. I just had a lot of personal stuff going on. I promise I'm going to be back in full force really soon. Just had a lot of things going on in my life that really hit me hard. Getting through it, though, I'll be back, I promise. But thank you guys. I really, really do appreciate the people that stick around and continue to support me. If you want to follow us on Twitch and Discord, those are always linked down below. We do two monthly giveaways on Discord, random giveaways on Twitch. If you want to be a part of the random giveaway that we do here on YouTube, all you do is sub to the channel, like, and comment on my past 10 videos, and that will automatically enter you into the random giveaway. I truly do love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.